So people have really fantastic pattern recognition abilities. And it's not just um, hearing messages that we expect to hear, but it's also visually as well. And there's a bunch of really good examples of this. Now, many people have seen this picture, but if you haven't, then it's not gonna make much sense. They're just black patches on a white background. But what if I told you that the title of this picture is called Dalmatian Dog? Does that help? Well, if you still can't see it, then, then savor this moment, because once I show you, then you'll never be able to see this photo in the same way ever again. You ready? All right, here it is. Now, of course, you've seen many examples of this. People have reported seeing a face on Mars or Elvis in the form of a tree or even seeing the Virgin Mary in a toasted cheese sandwich. We tend to see faces all over the place. In fact, there's a nice website called Faces in Places where people upload their own photographs of faces that they see in everyday objects and it's filled with hundreds of great examples. People are really good at perceiving patterns. In fact, we're essentially pattern recognition machines, particularly for faces. So many times, uh, our basic pattern recognition abilities are shaped by um, really specific expectations, like it's fun to smoke marijuana. And once you know what it is that you're listening for, automatically it kind of pops out, right? Um, and again, I mean, it's, this, this is found, for example, like in the Dalmatian dog. Once I tell you, for example, to look for the Dalmatian dog in the scene, all of the things that aren't consistent with the Dalmatian dog kind of just fade into the background and all the things that are consistent with the Dalmatian dog really kind of pop out. And so it's this kind of difference between um, sharpening things that are consistent with it and leveling the things that are uh, inconsistent with that specific message. And we see that this happens a lot, this sort of sharpening and leveling process. And we're gonna see this come up again and again throughout the course um, where things that kind of, things float to the top that are consistent with your expectations and things that aren't consistent kind of fade into the background. And this sort of expectancy effect um, is really common throughout uh, cognition and, and psychology more generally. Many times also, uh, instead of things being shaped by our specific expectations, they're also shaped by our general expectations. So things like, uh, well, language is a good one. So language, uh, we aren't even aware really of kind of doing any sort of interpretation whatsoever, right? When you read a sentence, it just kind of emerges what the meaning of that sentence is. But there's all thing, sorts of things like syntax and grammar, obviously spelling, um, word configurations, um, sentence structure. These things are all kind of happening and you're applying them. You're making these interpretations without even knowing that there's anything going on. Um, and there's some really good examples of this as well. In this example by Steve Pinker, our vast experience with language allows us to deal with these noisy conditions and understand this seemingly garbled passage of text. The same goes for our ability to interpret bad handwriting, something that humans find incredibly easy to do. But computer scientists and researchers in machine learning can tell you about the incredible amount of stored information and processing that's required for a computer to understand and interpret something as simple as a handwritten postal code or in an envelope. But subjectively, we just open our eyes and apprehend it as humans because we all have incredible amounts of experience with these sorts of materials that we encounter every day. So we're not even aware of having made an interpretation. I mean, that's what's so cool about this stuff, that um, when you're listening to Queen backward again, that message that it's fun to smoke marijuana, that message you can't hear, you can't put yourself back into the shoes of yourself, your previous self, before hearing that message, right? You can't unhear it again. And looking at the Dalmatian dog, you can't unsee the Dalmatian dog. You're forever tainted. Right? The bits that are consistent with the dog pop out. The bits that are consistent with it's fun to smoke marijuana pop out. And you fail to recognize, A, that you're even making any sort of interpretation whatsoever, and B, that there are you know, a squillion other ways that you, can, that you could have heard or that you could have seen these things. And this is a really 
important concept. We're, it's so important, we're calling it the fundamental cognitive error. And this is just this idea that, that we don't recognize that we've made an interpretation and that there are a million other ways that it could have been interpreted. It's clear that seeing and hearing both involve considerable knowledge about the world. Yep. But we can also add memory to that list. So I spoke to an expert in the area, Beth Loftus, and she explained some of the research that she's been working on for decades. And it turns out that memory doesn't work uh, as well as we might expect.